Horshaw Ryu's prize-winning exploits must have been painful viewing for his high school rivals, left far behind to fight for bragging rights in mid to lower Division 2. And for the first time in over two years, those rights belonged to Oho. The 21-year-old grandson of Taiho has clearly been listening to a lot of advice, most of which urging him to play it cool when opponents take his belt. That was certainly the case on day one, Dai Shouho getting the left inside, but instantly clamped and pressed out. On day two, he let standard slip against a man he beat in May, scoring with some trademark thrusts, but leaving both shoulders exposed and hopelessly failing to switch angles when sidestepped. But on day three, he responded to parries much better, keeping feet more diagonal and driving with the right knee. Daisho Maru moves around well, so I tried to keep him in front of me, Oho said. I've lost to him before, so I really wanted a good hard tachiai to build on. I'm resting well each day and feeling good. I just want to win all the bouts I can. Day 4 defeat to Abi can be excused, Oho's simply not at that level yet, making his next proper contest this one on day 5 against local favourite Kaisho. And with a far firmer initial charge, Oho got the left inside and a tight outside right to end Kaisho's unbeaten start. I suppose my movement was good, said Oho, who had lost to Kaisho before. My arms were well extended, and I made sure that he didn't secure his inside right. I'm winning step by step, but still nowhere near where I want to be. Day 6 took him a tad closer though, as his core pushing game overwhelmed first time for Kyokushuho. He moved to 5 wins with a force out of Nishikigi, then sought to extend his 2-0 record against Nishiki Fuji. But this was a Tachiai he most surely lost, and, with belt fully captured, faced a steep uphill battle to regain position. The bear hug was of no use, as was the clamp, and after that, he was out of ideas. <laughs> then a crafty face slap marked the start of a prolonged hangover which saw him again thrown to clay by Mitoryu, who he is yet to beat. Day 10 though put his raw strength in full view, as he breached Sadanoumi's armpits and lifted him with no belt grip. On day 11 he breached the armpits of now retired Takagenji twice, assailing him with a vicious throat hold before completing the force out. But a first in-ring meeting with Wakamoto Haru, to whom he defaulted in May, went south once he was unable to break the formidable left-hand grip. He would thus try for a winning score again in this bout with Bushozan. And secure it he did with that unnatural clamping power. I ended up attacking from the outside, but my legs got forward well, so all was fine, Oho reflected. Two winning scores in a row breeds confidence. And whether I win or lose the final two bouts will make all the difference. He was right there, 
transforming his fortunes with a bullying right grip on Yutakayama, who he now leads 2-0. And calmly responding to Enho's inside attack with a strong right clamp, chest pressure from above, and a pin of the right elbow. Double figures represent his best ever score as a salaried man, and likely put him in the top half of the division for September. For his ex Saitama Sakai teammate Koto Shoho, though, the result was more sobering. Unlike Oho, he was all at sea once Enho slid inside and started July with a painful bump. And on day two, except with defensive shoves, he was wholly unable to move Mitoryu and toppled from the exposed right armpit. On day three, though, we at least glimpsed the star quality that took him to Upper Maigashida. His knees and feet making a comfortable home of the rope, his hefty left elbow and frontal right hold, then generating the required force to win. And we hoped that would trigger a run. But this first face-off with Takakento could scarce have gone worse. The Emerald Belter winning every single exchange, and having him careening in all directions like a leaf in a gale. Day 5 though was his ideal setup. A foe offering little movement and a straightforward belt battle. But for the young man who came into July on three straight defeats, momentum just would not come. Bushozan, presumably a keen student of the Mitoryu bout, caught the floating right armpit in a flash. Sadano Umi, his chest as the shield, seized an outside left and flew in with the entire body. Then Wakamoto Haru, whose parents are on good terms with his own, became the latest to identify his right arm as the danger, and do all within his ken to neutralize. <laughs> on day 9, although his face likely needed ointment, he rediscovered his flexibility drawing Shohozan in well before pulling the head away on the slide and deflecting. And I really wish I'd been there on days 10 and 11, when he formed a whirlpool around Akua for just his second win in their six meetings, then got his favoured grip on Kyokutaise, forcing him out just before he grounded his knee. What we hoped was that he'd better his seven wins in May. What we got, it pains me to say, was something akin to a Koto horror show. The Daisho Maru parries dealt with by Oho worked far better here. Nishiki Fuji beat him on broadly the same lines, knocking him forward, then borrowing in. Nishikigi was next in the long queue to hammer the left armpit. And backward skipping Tohakuryu had him running like a headless chicken before clobbering with two sharp rights. 510 is Kotoshoho's worst ever score at this level. Fans are openly asking what's happened. 
and those closest to him reply that he's simply never had to cope with failure on this scale. His 22nd birthday next week will sound another chime urging him to kick on. And the next time we see him, do not adjust your screens or rub your eyes. It really is true that giant killer Enho, technique prize winner Midori Fuji, and Koto Shoho will be battling demotion to Division 3, having been leapfrogged by the likes of Oho, Takakento, and Tohakuryu. Such rapidly changing fortunes, of course, are what makes sumo all the more engrossing for us, and nerve-wracking for the men concerned.